hot. <laughs> I'm... So I have no time. This feels very loud. Um, I have no time. We're going to go really fast with some great concepts. And so let's just go. I think there's a new paradigm happening. Is this mic okay? The sounding? Okay. There's a new paradigm that I think is much larger than the sharing economy that I think has three components. Excess capacity that is leveraged on platform platforms and we partic peer people participate. I'm calling it Peers Inc. And I think we're inventing right now the collaboration economy and reinventing capitalism. These companies and the ones that you guys also know, Airbnb and Uber and blah, blah, car and on and on that we're all here for, follow this pattern. So it's much larger to me than just sharing assets. It's a much larger phenomena. When we talk about leveraging excess capacity, we're actually talking about sharing because excess capacity is not something in our control. It's an asset that we're having to share among lots of people. And my favorite example, actually I have lots of favorites, you'll recognize this one, bed sharing. So get in your mind, bed sharing. I think some of you have done that before. Um, when I travel, I like to stay at friends' houses and I get to stay in their spare bedroom. If I'm lucky, I have a double bed. If I'm unlucky, I'm sleeping in this teenager's bed and then we have hotels invented specifically because we don't often have friends. So bed sharing. When you do the research, the Intercontinental Hotel Group is the largest hotel chain. It took them 65 years to build those 645,000 rooms. And you can see it's hard work. The Hilton Hotel in 93 years still was unable to do it. And we know Airbnb in its fourth year had 650,000 rooms available. And Couchsurfing in its ninth year had two and a half million rooms. This is where actually all of us in the room say, my God, something incredible is happening. What is going on? The world has transformed, that we can make these things happen so quickly. What I think is going on is that the internet has made it possible for us to share lots of little parts. The transaction costs are completely transformed. Why did we invent companies? It was to do things that we as individuals couldn't do. And what are those types of things? Very large investments. I as an individual can't do those things. Things that require many kinds of intelligence. I'm only good at one or two things. If it takes lots of things, I can't do it. Things that require standards and consistency. I'm Robin Chase. I can't make any standards. You guys don't care. You have to have an entity that has bigger strength behind you. On the flip side, individuals do things much better than companies which would be stand localization, customization, and specialization. And if you think about the Industrial Revolution, it ripped out all of those things because they were painful for big companies to do. They wanted to get economies of scale, and if you wanted anything special, you didn't want to do it. Today, these two things are complementary, and because of the internet, we can put these two together in a beautiful way, and it's this combination that I'm calling Peers, Inc. The Inc. side, which can be companies or governments or NGOs, are creating platforms, and the peers are delivering the diversity of offering. I can boil it down it's to something smaller. It's very complementary, symbiotic. Each side has to play with the other, and it's all floating in this excess sea of excess capacity. What I love about the excess capacity is that it's resource and cost efficient. How do I define it? It already exists, it's been paid for, but there's some more value there, and there's three ways to get at that. One is to slice this asset, and if you think about Zipcar, that's what it did. It took a big car and let people buy little slices of it by the hour. You can aggregate, that's what Airbnb does, it takes lots of little things and puts them together so now they're interesting. And the third, I think, is the most interesting, is that you can open that asset up and let new value be extracted. And the whole open data movement would be a nice example of that. And I think of your smartphone as that. All of these different novel ways of using that smartphone are in fact appears in collaboration. The ink being the, the smartphone iOS or Android and the peers being millions of people around the world who have been coming up with great ways to use that asset and not have to pay for the full price of a smartphone. These apps just are, you, don't have, you, you wouldn't buy the phone for some of these apps. If we look at the, the incorporated side, the platform for participation, what is remarkable about it is that it provides the ability to organize, simplify, and empower. We as individuals are now given the power of the corporation or the power of the government. And all the, all the economies of scale are things that the ink, the platform side, can give you. 
something that struck me and strikes me when we talk about the sharing economy is there is this idea that the person who builds the plat that platforms are being now privatized and we're taking things that used to be in the public sector or we're gift economy and we're privatizing them. And I feel, and I'm going to be very controversial here, I feel that that's rather naive if we're talking about things that are of scale. What does it cost to build a platform? For hundreds of euros, you have your great idea. For tens, hundreds of thousands of euros, those of you who are doing startups, you know it takes hundreds of thousands. In a million euros, you're beginning to figure out, yeah, this thing actually works. If we think of blah, blah, car, they've spent tens of millions. Airbnb has spent hundreds of millions. These platforms are not trivial and easy to make. It is really, it's really hard. Most of them fail. It takes a huge amount of effort. But what is striking, which I think we all need to take very strong handle of, is that platforms are like mini governments. They establish the rules of engagement by which all the peers play. So it is critical who are the financiers. How are we going to do this? And so they, the, the financier of the platform is the one who gets to make those rules. And this is something that you really, we, we all know. But remember, it costs hundreds of millions of dollars. This is a terrifying prospect. So yes, we can have governments pay for it. And my government is completely owned by private, the private sector big corporations. That's not helping me. The private sector can pay for it. And if we think of them, again, so the financiers, how do, what, what is their rule? To maximize value. And in fact, it's to maximize shareholder value, not stakeholder value. So again, it's cutting out the peers. It's a very nerve-wracking thing. We talk about um, the people pay for it. Yay, people pay for it. But crowdfunding has got serious problems. We're just in the very beginning of it. I think of crowdfunding as like a baby. And we, it's time for us to improve it. And um, my example here, let me just go, is so Oculus Rift. They did a Kickstarter campaign for $2 million. Let's see if this clicks through. My clicker is not working anymore. Oh, well, so let me tell you about the Oculus Rift story. So they did Kickstarter for $2 million. And then 18 months later, it was bought by Facebook for $2.5 billion. I'm sorry, I don't have these numbers. They were up there. Had you invested $300 dollars in that Kickstarter campaign for the Series A equity value, your return would have been $48,000. So $300 that you gave away in exchange for your Oculus Rift quickly got converted into $48,000 worth of value. We need to improve that process so that people can say, you for free, I'll do it like this, and if you're going to commercialize it and sell it, I need another value system. So we need to think hard about that. These companies grow very quickly. Here's Etsy and blah, blah, car. I'm really rushing because I want to get through other parts. The peers are providing amazing diversity and innovation and resilience and redundancy. We are a key piece of this whole thing. And you know what? I have to go so fast because I want to get to this other part. The, this, the structure organ delivers something I think of as three miracles. Why we need miracles right now is because we are in a moment of extreme crisis. This is a, a report from the World Bank conservative financial institution, four degrees is how much global average climate change we'll have by 2100 if every country does everything they promised to do. If you're like me, what does plus four degrees mean? I went and did some research. If you look at the last time it was minus four degrees, where I live in Boston, across North America and throughout Europe, we were under several kilometers of ice. So the difference between minus four degrees and today is 20,000 years and several kilometers of ice, and we are going forward that amount in 85. This is if we do everything we promise to do. If we don't do everything we promise to do, it'll be by 2060 that we get that number. And so by 2060, the world would be basically uninhabitable. And by 2040, which is right 15 years from now, it's going to be looking bad. So while we're sitting here thinking, this is a great thing, let's talk about the sharing economy, we need extreme disruption right away. So, <laughs> my friend Benny Banerjee, he says, you can't solve exponential problems with linear solutions. That is what we are all trying to do, and I'm really tired of it. <laughs> so we need to try this peers inc paradigm. It provides these three miracles. Miracle number one, we can because we are leveraging excess capacity, we can defy the laws of physics. If I had told you four years ago, in 2000, I'm going to start the largest hotel chain in the world, I'll beat the intercontinental hotel groups in four years, you would have all laughed and said, physically impossible. And we would have agreed, it was physically impossible to build the hotels. This is what a trend line of business as usual asset building would look like over six years. This is Airbnb's growth pattern. 
because they leverage excess capacity, we cannot build this brand new. I don't care about blue-green algae, new high-speed trains, big cities. We've got to use stuff we have right now. The second piece, because the second miracle, because we are building on a platform for participation, we can have exponential learning because we are paying attention to iterations and we learn from iterations. So my example here is Duolingo. And 100, the average, to learn the unit of measurement for a language is what can you learn in one semester of university, which is 130 hours. The biggest one before was the Rosetta Stone, very expensive, we can teach you in 54 hours. We would all say, Yahoo, 54 hours, much better than 130. Duolingo, free online learning, led by a scientist who is brilliant. In 34 hours, he is doing it because he tells me he can conduct 100 experiments simultaneously with 150,000 people iterating on each one of those, and in 48 hours, he can tell you precisely which is a better way to learn a language, and so he can get these results. And here's um, Duolingo's growth curve. Um, they have 70 million people who are using it now, and it's only three years old. Miracle number three, because we are working with a diversity of peers, the right person magically appears. And in fact, all of us right here now are better than Superman. Superman can only fly and have, you know, he's strong. But I can, you know, look at Wikipedia and I can find out what people on the ground are doing. And I have this amazing power. And my example here is Waze, and I'm going very, very fast. Um, I was driving down the road in New, in New Hampshire and my son says, it was snowing heavy just like this, and my son says, oh, look at that, in the front seat. And I thought a deer was running across the street, and in fact, there was a car accident in slow motion. Two cars had slammed together, and they're spinning off the street in the snow, off the highway. And as my, my son says that, Waze says, caution, accident ahead. <laughs> the right person was like, I was behind it, and the car next to me was a Wazer who put it in. So we have this ability, when I go back to climate, what is interesting to me, we need to have speed, scale, and local adaptation. We need to learn very quickly, so we need to do things in this peers incorporated way. Peers Inc. is a collaboration. You need both the platform and the peers. You cannot do it. One side cannot do it alone. It manned demands collaboration. And I'm going to take one more minute beyond my time to tell you this very important last piece. We are moving definitively from the industrial capitalism where you got the most value by hoarding trademarks, copyrights, patents, certifications, a, a desire for scarcity. And we are positively moving to this new world because the internet exists and we can connect people and things. So let me go through these four principles on which we are definitively moving to the collaborative economy. If we think of assets, shared networked assets always deliver more value than closed proprietary ones. And I told you two ways, they are more efficiently used and you get brand new value out of it. So true. If we think of minds, you guys are so smart in this room, but we know that there are more smart people outside of the room. It's true, and now we can get hold of them. So if you're a company doing things with just your people inside, you will lose. More smart people, more innovation, more creativity out of there. If we think of collective action, why do we, why, do we, why as a big entity do we want to do this? Because the opportunities and benefits of shared network assets are much larger than the problems of sh open shared assets. So Wikipedia, Yes, there's graffiti, there's lies, so what? We have the world's encyclopedia. The last point is from a very self-interested perspective, me alone, Robin Chase. When I contribute to one of these platforms, I always get more than I give. I add my little piece in, I have everyone's stuff. This is defin we can't argue with these points. This is the reality. So you can keep going down industrial capitalism and it's not going to work because we can learn faster. This is the structure for our times you can experiment, iterate, adapt, and evolve, and we are, the world is moving so fast, we need to be doing this. So I leave you with this, and I'm going to do this one last slide, which is my book. I'm very passionate about this. We are on the edge of this incredible, nightmarish time, and we have the opportunity to choose the paths. Either we're going to address climate change, or we're not. Either we're going to invent the economy that we want, or we're gonna keep going down this capitalism path and ruin everything. So you guys in this room, <laughs> it's, it's your challenge as well as mine and we need to get with the program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robin.